We're continuing on with our review for the AP tests. Uh, we finished up Unit 1 talking about the foundations of American democracy, and uh, today we are starting Unit 2. So Unit 2, which is the interactions among branches of government. We're basically talking about uh, the three branches of government, the legislative exam the legislative branch, the executive branch, and the judicial branch, and then also throwing in the bureaucracy, which happens, just happens to fall under the executive branch into uh, this unit also. So the three branches plus the bureaucracy. And the first few uh, topics are going to focus on Congress. They're really focusing on uh, the powers of Congress, the structure of Congress, the roles of Congress. <clears throat> so topic 2.1 is what we're focusing on today which is the Senate and the House of Representatives, right? Congress itself. Uh, so the learning objective states that students will describe the different structures, powers, and functions of each house of Congress, right? We know that Congress is divided into two houses. It's a bicameral legislature uh, created from the Connecticut plan, the, the Great Compromise, the... <clears throat> Uh, compromise between the Virginia plan, the large state plan, and the New Jersey plan, the small state plan. So we're talking about Congress and we're talking about the structures, powers, and functions. So the essential knowledge, the first essential knowledge says that uh, students will know that the Senate is designed to represent states equally and the House is designed to represent the population. And this is what we were just kind of talking about. The large state plan, the Virginia plan, called for a, uh, a legislature where representation would be based on a state's population. So the more populated a state was, the more representation they would have. And this is our House of Representatives, right? Our House of Representatives. Every state is guaranteed at least one member, uh, but the more population a state has, then uh, the more representatives are going to have. And this is all based every 10 years. We have the census coming up this year in 2020. And uh, the census is important because it shows us our, our population of each state. And then we have, um, we have uh, a reapportionment where the seats in the House are reapportioned based on those changes. So uh, if states gain or lose population, they could possibly gain or lose seats in the House of Representatives, right? And the Senate, which was the New Jersey plan, the small state plan, right, said that all states would be uh, equally represented in the legislature. So we have the Senate where every state has two representatives. No matter the size of the state, all states are equally represented in the Senate. So we have 100 senators, two per state, and we have 435 House representatives uh, with California being the largest. California is the most populated state, so it has 53 House districts, uh, each one represented by a House representative member. The second piece of essential knowledge that you need to know is the different chamber sizes and constituencies influence formality of debate. And this is kind of going piggybacking on, on what we just kind of talked about, right? The uh, different chamber sizes, 100 members in the Senate, Right, So the Senate is less formal when it comes to debate. There's fewer rules on debate in the Senate. Right, It's a lot easier to uh, control debate with 100 members versus the House, which has 435 members, where it is much more chaotic, uh, needs a lot more structure, Right, and there's a lot more rules. Uh, the House Rules Committee, right, which is one of those big committees, to... Uh, to kind of control and move uh, debate and legislation along in the House is much more structured, whereas the Senate is more loosely structured, uh, fewer rules and fewer restrictions on the House. And then, um, I'm sorry, in the Senate, not the House, but uh, the Senate is more loosely structured, right? And then uh, the constituencies, right? The Senate, each senator represents the whole state. Right, so in Michigan we have two senators. Those senators represent in the United States Senate. They represent all the issues pertaining to Michigan. We have 14 House districts, and those House districts are represented by House representative members. Right, so those House members represent a district and the issues that pertain to that district. Um, so, uh, where senators tend to be more a little bit more generalist, they tend to know. A little bit about more 
right? House represent members tend to zone in and hone in on those those areas and those issues that are specific to their district. And then coalitions in Congress are affected by term length differences. The third essential knowledge that you know is the term length differences, right? That uh, the Senate more served and, and has uh, been assigned to six year terms, right? So, so senators serve six year terms and they're reelected every six years. Uh, that gives them more time, obviously, in the Senate once elected. It gives them a little bit more um, time to, to introduce and, and to pursue their ideas, their goals, right, within that Senate. Whereas House representative members are elected for two-year terms. They were the closest body, most to closely tied to the people, right? They uh, only serve two-year terms. So they are, if they're not doing their, their job, if they're not doing a good job, if they're not representative of the people they represent in that district, uh, they'll be up for re-election for two years and could possibly get voted out, right? We know that, that Congress members do tend to have high re-election rates because of uh, incumbency advantages, but uh, the House representatives are only serving two years versus the Senate members, which are serving six. Um, the enumerated and implied powers in the Constitution allow the creation of public policy of Congress, right? So those enumerated powers are the powers given specifically to Congress in Article 1, Section 8. Those 18 powers, 18 clauses, right? Congress has the power to coin money, declare war, uh, to regulate commerce, right? To pass rules they deem that, re that necessary and proper to carry out their other enumerated powers. Uh, create courts, the power to tax, right? All of these, a lot of these things that were uh, raise a military, raise, raise a military. A lot of the problems that were uh, risen came about during the Articles of Confederation were resolved under the, the Constitution. And the Constitution gives Congress a lot more power than they had previously under the Articles, right? So the enumerated powers are the powers given specifically to Congress, right? Um, and then these, these implied powers are, are often uh, delegated or implied through the Necessary and Proper Clause, right? So the Necessary and Proper Clause gives Congress the power to make laws that they deem necessary and proper to carrying out their other enumerated powers powers that aren't specific, specifically given to Congress, but are implied through their other powers. Um, so passing a federal budget, right? Passing a federal budget, I guess is, you would say is a implied power through the power to tax, right? Congress has the power to tax, so they bring money in. And then also it says that Congress uh, sh shall have the power to, uh, that all appropriation bills, all spending bills must begin in the House of Representatives. Right, so all revenue bills and, and spending bills must begin in the House of Representatives. Why is that? Because the House was most closely tied to the people. Um, so I guess through the ability to tax and spend comes this, this implied power to create a budget, right? Um, so raising revenue, that is a uh, the power to tax. That is a enumerated power, right? Coining money, that is an enumerated power also. Congress has given the power to coin money to have a uniform currency in the United States. Uh, declaring war, another enumerated power, right? The power to declare war gives Congress the power to regulate foreign policy and to become involved in foreign policies with other countries. Uh, maintaining the armed forces, same thing, another enumerated power giving Congress the power to uh, create and, and regulate foreign policy, policy with other countries. And then enacting legislation that addresses a wide range of economic, environmental, and social issues based on the Necessary and Proper Clause. By the Necessary and Proper Clause, uh, the first uh, Supreme Court case we look at, McCall versus Maryland, which basically says that the power to create a national bank, an economic issue, right, is necessary and proper. It's a power that Congress has under this Necessary and Proper Clause. Right to coin money and borrow money and to tax. Uh, this allow these powers, these enumerated powers, give imply that Congress has the power to create a national bank. Um, you know the the social right the the um, uh, 
the civil rights movement, right? A lot of those powers to prevent discrimination, to end discrimination, to uh, end segregation in the South, right? Those are social issues. Um, it doesn't really say anything about Congress having the power to, uh, you know, end segregation, right? But those are those are implied powers. Congress does have the power to make laws, and uh, Congress also has the power to, you know, the Fourteenth Amendment basically goes on and supports these civil rights movements. Uh, 14th Amendment says that all people are citizens of the United States. Any person born or naturalized in the U.S. is a citizen. And as citizens, right, states cannot deprive us of, of specific rights without due process, the due process clause, and that we're all equally protected under the law. And uh, so Congress passes the Voting Rights Act of 1964, the Civil Rights Act of 1965, which are these social issues, these social uh, laws to, designed to protect the people and to prevent discrimination and segregation discrimination in the South. So uh, that is basically all of it. That's the, the, the learning objectives and the uh, four different essential knowledges that, that you need to know. There's a lot in there. Um, make sure you know it all. Keep studying. If you have any questions or problems, feel free to reach out. Thanks. Bye.